it's nuts. If I could tell you how many football coaches reached out to me and said, uh, Thank you. Team's coming off of finals, and you have two quick back-to-back, -back, actually three, three. very yeah. quick games. Um, how do you get the team ready for that? Well, we, um, we practiced for Tulsa on Tuesday. We're practicing for Nebraska today, and then we'll practice for Prairie View on Saturday and Sunday. Um, you know, I, I know there's a lot of superstitious and coach speak about it. You can't look forward. You can't look ahead. I, I think you'd be penalizing your team if you didn't here. If you tried to get ready for Nebraska on a – day in between you'd be you'd be behind and Tulsa's playing really good at home so um, you know we knew the kids were already going to be fried anyway uh, taking finals uh, so we practiced for Tulsa on Tuesday we're practicing for Nebraska today then we'll turn our attention to Prairie View on Saturday and then we play them in reverse order uh, take advantage of having our guys here uh, and then the other part is is making sure kids have a good balance being able to study and 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 not just completely fry their brains. Uh, your practices are short. They're easy. You uh, on the minds. You're not overloading their head with new stuff. You're just very basic with what you're doing. What are the challenges with playing that that quick a turnaround, especially with what all you've been through? <clears throat> fatigue, mental fatigue, uh, possible uh, letdown of um, preparation which you got to just take as many of those factors off the board as you can. Uh, we, we won't practice as long, so we, we maybe hopefully won't be as physically fatigued. Uh, we'll do the prep over a long period of time, so maybe we're not mentally fatigued. <clears throat> then this is a challenge. They're all three different, too. Um, you know, the, the calendar was a challenge this year. Whenever we knew the way the calendar laid out, it was going to be really hard to get the right number of games, and there was going to be a stretch in there where you had to do this. So we thought this was a good time. Um, it's, you know, NBA teams do it all the time. I, I think we can do it too. So we, if, in an SEC tournament, you'd have to play three games in three days. Uh, we played three and three. That's one reason we went to um, Nashville and played three games in three days. This will seem like a break compared to that. So I think we'll be ready for it. But it, if you don't prepare for it, it can you could go zero and three real easy. How good is it to be home and then playing? That's a huge part of it. Yeah, having having the first two at home is massive. We haven't been home a lot. Our fans haven't seen us in a while. I hope they'll see some improvement when they do. Uh, but just the familiarity, uh, being in Bud, we shot it really well yesterday. It was so good to see the ball going through the hoop for everybody. Um, we had, you know, we had we had a kid go five for eleven, and she finished ninth in our shooting in games because we had ten. We had, we had eight kids that shot it better than five for eleven in full court situational stuff against our guys. So good to be home. Can you just tell me where you feel like your team is right now? Uh, you know, just kind of a state of the team. Yeah, um, ahead of where any of us thought we'd be at finals time when we were, you know, kind of looking at the blueprint and checking our benchmarks. Um, I, I think we're winning close games. We're executing. We're not turning it over. We're playing as fast as we ever have. We're still still not turning it over. Uh, we still don't have all the offense in, and we're clicking offensively. Defense is improving. Um, I think there are about 10 teams in the country right now who are really, really separated themselves away from everybody else. And I think there's about 50 in the middle. And I think we're one of those 50 in the middle. Um, and, and we look at it. We, we spend a lot of time. We got all kinds of time over there right now without, without having finals with, with no classes. So I, I think we're in the middle of the pack of teams that haven't separated themselves from everybody else yet. So where do you go from here until January the whatever? What, what do you got to do between now and then? To you are a veteran. You know to ask that question. I just told the team yesterday, um, there's not very many absolutes in college basketball, but in my, this is my 19th season in college basketball. There has never been a team that, that stayed the same during this time of the year. When you go from finals into now not having basketball, only basketball for about a month, there's never a team that stays the same. They either get progressively better or progressively worse. And which team do we want to be? So I think the way that we prepare, the way we um, practice, all of the things that we're going to do between now and when we start back in school, all of our kids should be done with finals today when we, when we step out of there. There should be a, a frenzy of fried brains, but a, serious, a, a sense of relief as well. Um, it's not that long ago that, well, it's a long time ago, but I still remember how it felt. 
uh, being done with finals. So we won't stay the same. Hopefully we get better and, and we're on the, not the other, other side of that because no team stays the same during December. Is there one or are there one or two kids who you feel like have distinguished themselves, you know, from point A to point B at this point? I think Bailey and Jalen have distinguished themselves in the ability to be chameleons and do whatever we needed the team to do that night. I think when you talk about Kier and Taylor, you have to talk about them together because they've basically, even though they're two very different individuals, they play one position. And when you look at the production we're getting from those guys, they've separated themselves. Then I think you've got Chelsea Mal and uh, Lex, who have at some point in time through the 10 games identified themselves as a dominant scorer, uh, an immediate playmaker. And so now you're talking about you've got seven kids, six kids, who have really established clearly identifiable roles and excelled in them. We need two or three more. You know, we need Rokia, we need Raven, um, we need Macy, um, we need IT. And IT has shown flashes of it. And I think IT has made Mal better. Um, Mal getting to 33 or 34 minutes of quality, IT being able to play 14 to 15 and, and really impact. I think getting IT to maybe closer to 20 to where I can only play Mal, I'll only play Mal 33 or 34 will make both of them better. Uh, and we can get her some reps, them some reps together. Um, I think we're going to need that for the SEC play. Uh, I think we're going to need times when we play Taylor and Kiera together. So with that being the case, then you need Macy to be able to play against certain matchups. Um, we started out playing 10 kids. I, I know, I knew, and I told you all, all that's not me, and it's not going to probably be me when it all said and done, but we still need those kids to continue to fight for roles and be ready because, again, knock on wood, we hadn't had any injuries. We hadn't had anybody miss playing time. But that's inevitable too. Defensively, Prairie View, I know the record's three and four, but defensively, they're only giving up 56.6 a game. And what do you see defensively from them? Well, uh, it, it's grinded out, it's very uh, hard to find shots. Part of that's a little bit indicative of how they play offensively too. There's, there's not as many possessions. Um, it's going to be one of those things we're going to have to make shots to create shots. They're not going to foul us a whole bunch. Um, so we'll have to make some jumpers to open up the lane come off a week off with finals you don't know how you, know, you could have a good week you don't know how it's going to come at two o'clock on Sunday yeah I mean where do you what do you look for as you were in pregame or whatever to, to see how you guys are going to play? I stopped looking at that I've always been wrong I'll go out and say man we're ready to play and then we play bad or man we don't look like we're ready to play so I've stopped going out there uh, I rely on Todd and Lacey and those guys that have a little bit better sense of it so I'll tr continue to trust those guys um I do think there is a certain amount of carryover from your preparation, though. I, I've <clears throat> you've never really had a full bad week and then played good, or vice versa. So um, you look for a little carryover, but again, like you said, man, you never know. You you don't ever know. We've had some of our worst shoot arounds, and then we go out and make our first eleven shots. So uh, a lot of times there's no rhyme or reason, but I've I've learned to stop trying to predict it because I'm terrible at it. I may be the worst. I'm kind of like George Costanza, go the exact opposite day and see how it works out, just because I'm usually wrong. Yep. Yep. Thank you.